Welcome back to the course on two phase flow with phase change in conventional and miniature channels. We are discussing the modeling of two phase flow and last time we have discussed the homogeneous model. Today we will discuss the separated flow model. In the separated flow model, there are the following assumptions or characteristics. The two phases flow separately and interact with each other. In the homogeneous model, it is assumed that the two phases flow together as a homogeneous mixture with the same velocity and mixture properties are calculated based on weighted averaging of the properties of the two phases. In the separated flow model, this assumption is relaxed and the two phases are allowed to flow separately and their properties are calculated separately. So, the velocities of the two phases can be different, uh, but the thermal equilibrium between the phases is assumed. That means, if the two phases are liquid and gas phases of the same substance, for example, water and steam, then both will be at the saturation temperature corresponding to the local pressure. The properties of the two phases are evaluated separately. So, if they are liquid vapor mixture of the same substance, then the properties can be evaluated based on the pressure and the properties of liquid will be those of the saturated liquid properties of the gas will be those of the saturated vapor. Correlations for two phase frictional multiplier are used we will define two phase multiplier and discuss correlations to calculate that multiplier. This multiplier is used to estimate the frictional pressure gradient. Then correlations for white fraction or slip ratio are also used and white fraction is required to calculate the gravitational and acceleration pressure gradients. So, consider a two phase flow flowing through a channel. So, as earlier the z coordinate is the axial coordinate, the angle with the horizontal is theta, the channel cross section area is A and the cross sectional area occupied by the liquid phase is A f and the area occupied by the gas phase is A g. The mass flow rate of the gas is m dot g, velocity of the gas phase is u g, mass flow rate of the liquid phase is m dot f, velocity of liquid phase is u f and the pressure at the inlet is p. The length of the element is d z. The pressure at the outlet is p plus d p, velocities are u g plus d u g and u f plus d u f and mass flow rates are m dot g plus d m dot g, m dot f plus d m dot f. The wall shear stress is tau w, which we will divide into two parts tau g w and tau f w. Also, as mentioned before, the interactions between the two phases are taken into account in this model. So, there will be wall shear stress at the interface. Also, I should mention that here the two phases are shown separately. Gas phase is here, liquid phase is here, but this does not mean that this model is only for stratified flow it is applicable for other types of flow patterns also like annular flow. This model is better for the flow patterns in which the phases are separated, but it need not necessarily be stratified flow. So, this is just a representation, it is a schematic diagram. Okay. So, now consider the mass balance mass balance the total mass flow rate will be the sum of the gas and liquid mass flow rates 
but here the gas and liquid mass flow rates can vary with axial position. The total mass flow rate will be same in steady state. The m dot g is equal to m dot x equal to g a x and x can vary with z m dot f will be m dot into 1 minus x equal to g a 1 minus x. The sum of the two areas a g and a f will be equal to a and here we are assuming constant cross sectional area. So, d a g plus d a f is equal to 0. Then the white fraction is a g by a and a f by a will be 1 minus alpha. Now, the phase velocities as mentioned before the two phases are allowed to flow with different velocities. So, velocity of the uh, gas phase will be given by m dot g upon a g rho g and it can be converted into different forms g g v g by alpha and g x v g by alpha. Similarly, the liquid velocity can be written as m dot f by a f rho f or g f v f upon 1 minus alpha or g 1 minus x v f upon 1 minus alpha. Now, the momentum balance has to be done separately for the two phases and the interaction between the two forces acting between the two phases also have to be taken into account. So, the force due to pressure at the inlet is minus a g d p and the at the outlet it is a g plus d a g p plus d p. The frictional force at the wall is tau g w p g w d z here tau d g w is the wall shear stress on the uh, due to the gas phase p g w is the wetted perimeter of the gas phase and d z is the length of the of the element then tau g f is the shear stress on the gas phase at the liquid vapor interface. And similarly, we have tau f g which is the shear stress on the liquid phase at the liquid vapor interface okay. and p g f is the perimeter of the liquid vapor interface p f g is also the same as p g f. This here this is the momentum balance for the liquid phase okay. and here we have tau f w which is the wall shear stress on the uh, liquid phase p f w is the wetted perimeter of the liquid phase and here this is the force due to pressure on the liquid phase at the inlet and force due to pressure on the liquid phase at the outlet. Okay. Oh, there is a mistake here there should be plus sign here and this also should be plus okay. Mm, minus plus this is minus this is minus and uh, here this is the weight rho g is the density of gas phase a g d z is the volume of the gas phase area into length and multiplied by g sin theta. So, this term is the weight of the gas phase. Okay. So, now we can simplify it and some terms get cancelled and we get a g d p minus p d a g minus tau g w p g w d z minus tau g f p g f d z minus rho g a g d z g sin theta is equal to u g d m dot g plus m dot g d u g. Similarly, in the liquid phase we have a similar balance equation and we can simplify it as this equation 2. 
Now, we will add equations 1 and 2. So, notice that this tau f g, tau f g and tau g f are action and reaction pairs. So, this will be equal to minus tau g f. Okay. So, when we add these two terms will get cancelled. So, after adding we get these, these terms get combined A g plus A f and D A g plus D A f gets combined and then here we have tau d g w p g w plus tau f w p f w. Here it is tau g f plus tau f g. So, as I have mentioned before these two will get cancelled and here we have rho g a g plus rho f a f. On the right hand side we have u g d m dot g plus m dot g d u g plus u f d m dot f plus m dot f d u f. Okay. So, a g plus a f is equal to a and then d a g plus d a f that since the total area is constant. So, d a g and d a f will get cancelled. Okay. So, then we have this term then a g a g upon a is alpha and a f upon a is 1 minus alpha. So, we get this rho g alpha plus rho f 1 minus alpha into a d z g sin theta. Okay. On the right hand side we have u g d m dot g plus m dot g d u g. So, that is d of m dot g d u g and similarly these two terms will combine as d of m dot f u f. Okay. Now, we divide all the terms by a d z. So, we get minus d p by d z minus 1 by a tau g w p g w plus tau f w p f w minus rho g alpha plus rho f 1 minus alpha into g sin theta and on the right hand side we have 1 by a d by d z of m dot g u g plus m dot f u f. Okay. Now, we can rearrange and write in this way the total pressure gradient minus d p by d z is equal to this plus this plus this. So, now we can identify the three terms on the right hand side the first one is d p by d z the pressure gradient due to friction which is given by this and it can be modeled as the pressure gradient due to friction assuming that only the liquid phase is flowing multiplied by a two phase frictional multiplier phi f o square. Okay. So, this is just a convenient notation. It is easy to calculate this pressure gradient assuming that only liquid is flowing through the channel. So, we can calculate this pressure gradient and then if we can somehow estimate phi f o square, then we can multiply and find the desired pressure gradient the two phase frictional pressure gradient. Now, what will be d p by d z f comma f o? It will be equal to 2 f f o by d into g square v f and then we multiply it by phi f o square. Phi f o square is yet to be evaluated the methods of evaluating it have to be found. The last term on the right hand side is the pressure gradient due to gravity. It is equal to rho g alpha plus rho f 1 minus alpha 
into g sin theta. Now, let us look at the middle term this one, it is equal to 1 by a d by d z of m dot g u g plus m dot f u f. Now, m dot g u g can be written as g g a into g g v g upon alpha. Similarly, m dot f u f can be written as g f a into g f v f upon 1 minus alpha. So, but g g is equal to g into x and g f is equal to g 1 minus x. So, using this we get g square x square v g upon alpha plus g square 1 minus x square into v f upon 1 minus alpha. So, g square can be taken outside and we get inside the derivative we get x square v g upon alpha plus 1 minus x square v f upon alpha. Okay. Now, we have to differentiate this expression inside curly brackets. So, there is alpha also here and alpha depends on the quality as well as the pressure. Okay. So, when we differentiate with respect to alpha, then we have to differentiate with respect to x and p. So, we get two partial derivatives of alpha de by alpha by de by x at constant pressure and de by alpha by de by p at constant quality and we use chain rule for differentiation. So, first we derivative with respect to x is this we get 2 x v g upon alpha minus 2 into 1 minus x v f upon 1 minus alpha. and we get de by alpha by de by x at constant pressure into 1 minus x square v f upon 1 minus alpha square minus x square v g by alpha square and g square d p by d z x square by alpha d v g by d p plus de by alpha by de by p at constant x into 1 minus x whole square v f upon 1 minus alpha whole square minus x square v g upon alpha square. Now, the total pressure gradient is the sum of the three pressure gradients due to friction, acceleration and gravity. So, we add all of them. So, we get this expression on the right hand side. Now, notice that here there is d p by d z which is unknown. So, this term containing the unknown pressure gradient has to be taken to the left hand side and combined with this d p by d z. So, we define m square which is the multiplier of the d p by d z including g square. Okay. This we call as m square. So, m square is equal to minus g square to x square upon alpha d v g by d p plus de by alpha by de by p at constant x into 1 minus x whole square v f upon 1 minus alpha whole square minus x square v g upon alpha square or we can use the absolute value sign the quantity in the square brackets will be negative. It is not so obvious, but it is negative. So, its absolute value has to be taken 
and then we can write m square as this in terms of absolute value. Now, when we take this term to the left hand side and combine with d p by d z, we get d p by d z into 1 minus m square and on the right hand side we have 2 f f o upon d g square v f phi f o square plus g square d x by d z to 2 x v g by alpha minus 2 1 minus x v f by alpha plus double alpha by double x p into 1 minus x whole square v f upon 1 minus alpha whole square minus x square v g by alpha square plus rho g alpha plus rho f 1 minus alpha into g sin theta. Now, we divide throughout by 1 minus x square 1 minus m square and then we get d p by d z this expression for d p by d z 1 upon 1 minus m square into this. Now, we have defined another shorthand here v star which is this this expression has been denoted as v star. So, we get 2 f f o by d g square v f by f o square plus g square d x by d z v star plus rho g alpha plus rho f 1 minus alpha g sin theta. Okay. Now, let us consider when m square is very small. Similar to the homogeneous model, this m square denotes the effect of compressibility of the vapor phase. So, if m square is very small, that means the effect of the compressibility of the vapor phase can be neglected. Note that we have already neglected the compressibility of the liquid phase. So, B f has been assumed as constant. So, while differentiating we have not differentiated V f. Now, if m square is much smaller than unity then 1 minus m square can be taken as approximately unity and then we are left with only the quantity inside curly brackets here. So, we have d p by d z is equal to this expression and now the first term we can identify as d p by d z due to friction which is given by this 2 f f o by d g square v f phi f o square. The second term is identified as pressure gradient due to acceleration which is equal to g square d x by d z v star and the last term is the pressure gradient due to gravity which is rho g alpha plus rho f 1 minus alpha g sin theta. Now, let us consider choked flow. Similar to the analysis done in the homogeneous model, here also under what conditions will the pressure gradient tend to infinity? It will happen when 1 minus m square tends to 0, that means m square tends to 1. So, the expression for m square is this. So, this expression should be equal to 1 and then from that we get the expression for the maximum mass flux and the maximum mass flow rate. So, this is the maximum mass flow rate that can flow through the channel. Okay, now, there is a the question of two phase frictional multipliers, four multipliers can be defined. The frictional pressure gradient can be expressed in terms of the hypothetical frictional pressure gradients. So, d p by d z f is equal to d p by d z f comma f o the frictional pressure gradient assuming that all the fluid is in the liquid phase multiplied by a multiplier phi f o square. So, this is equal to 2 f f o 
by d g square v f phi f o square. Now, similarly, the two phase pressure gradient can be written in terms of another hypothetical pressure gradient, which is based on the assumption that only liquid is flowing through the channel. And this the corresponding multiplier is denoted by phi f square and this will be equal to 2 f f by d g square 1 minus x square v f phi f square. Similarly, we can write the two phase frictional pressure gradient in terms of d p by d z f comma g o which is based on the assumption that all the fluid is in the gas phase and the corresponding multiplier is phi g o square and we can write it in terms of d p by d z f comma g assuming that only gas is flowing through the channel and corresponding frictional multiplier is phi g square. Now, let us obtain these multipliers for the homogeneous model before we work on them for the separated flow model. So, this will be good for understanding these multipliers. So, d p by d z f is equal to 2 f t p by d g square v f upon x v f g and d p by d z f comma f o is equal to 2 f f o by d to g square v f. Now, f f o square is equal to the ratio of these two. So, this is equal to f t p by f f o into 1 plus x v f g by v f. Similarly, we can get expressions for phi f square. So, here we get 1 minus x whole, whole square and for phi g o square and phi g square also. The mixture viscosity can be calculated using Mac Adams relation 1 by mu bar is equal to x by mu g plus 1 minus x by mu f. Now, for laminar flow the friction factor is given by 16 by R e. So, f f o is equal to 16 by R e f o which is equal to 16 mu f by g d and f t p is equal to 16 by R e t p equal to 16 mu bar by g d. And we substitute it here. So, here we have the ratio f t p by f f o. So, for f t p and f f o we substitute these two expressions and we use expression for mu bar using Mac Adams relation and if we do that then we get this relation for phi f o square. It is 1 plus x v f g by v f plus 1 plus x mu f g by mu g. V f g has been defined before it is equal to v g minus v f and mu f g here denotes mu f by minus mu g. Mu f is larger than mu g. So, this was for laminar flow. Similarly, we can find a phi f o square for turbulent flow. If it is turbulent flow through smooth pipes, we can use the Blasius relation, which is f f o is equal to 0 0.079 r e f o is minus 1 by 4 and r e f o is equal to mu f by g d and f t p is equal to 0 0.079 r e t p raised to minus 1 by 4 and r e t p is equal to mu bar by g d. So, we substitute and then we get phi f o square is equal to 1 plus x v f g by v f into 1 plus x mu f g by mu g raised to minus 1 by 4. So, these are the expressions for phi f o square. Similarly, we can find expressions for the other multipliers 
for homogeneous model phi f square phi g square and phi g o square. Now, the question is how to find the frictional multipliers for Martinelli for separated flow model. So, for that there are correlations a classic correlation is by Lockhart and Martinelli. In this a new parameter is defined which is called Martinelli parameter and it is denoted by capital X and capital X square is defined as the ratio of these two pressure gradients. The pressure gradient assuming that only liquid is flowing through the channel divided by the pressure gradient assuming that only gas is flowing through the channel. And notice this the definitions of phi f square and phi g square this and this. Okay. So, using these two expressions we can obtain the Martinelli parameter and we get it as phi f square upon phi g square. Phi f and phi g are yet unknown. Okay. So, x is also equal to phi f upon phi g. Now, the question is how to estimate x. So, for that correlations are required. Lockhart and Martinelli considered four flow regimes. These are based on the Reynolds numbers of the liquid phase and the gas phase. If the liquid phase is in the turbulent regime and the gas phase is also in the turbulent regime, then it is called turbulent turbulent. Turbulent turbulent re regime and the corresponding Martinelli parameter is denoted by x suffix t t. If the liquid phase is laminar or viscous and the gas phase is turbulent, then it is called viscous turbulent regime and the suffix is v t. Similarly, turbulent viscous regime is T v and viscous viscous regime is V v. Commonly in conventional channels, the regime is turbulent turbulent, both the phases are turbulent, but in miniature channels commonly it is viscous viscous, both phases are laminar. Now, for turbulent flow through smooth pipes, we can obtain x t t and using the Blasius relation, we get x t t equal to v f by v g raise to 0 0.5 into mu f by mu g raise to 0 0.125 and into 1 minus x upon x raise to 0 0.875. For the viscous regime, we use 16 by R e for friction factor and then we get V f by V g equal into raise to 0 0.5 into mu f by mu g raise to 0 0.5 into 1 minus x upon x raise to 0 0.5. These are x t t and x v v. For x t t, we have used Blasius relation for both phases, friction factors of both phases and for the viscous viscous regime, we have used 16 by R e for both phases. But if it is viscous turbulent regime or turbulent viscous regime, then for the two phases, the friction factor correlations will be different and they will involve the Reynolds number and Reynolds number involves mass flux and the diameter. So, therefore, x v t and x t v will also depend on the mass flux and the diameter. Now, to correlate the frictional multipliers, 
there are relations given by Shisholm and Laird. Originally, Lockhart and Martinelli had given graphs. Then later on, Shisholm and Laird gave these relations phi f square is equal to 1 plus c by x plus 1 by x square and phi g square is equal to 1 plus c x plus x square. Now, the c is the c parameter and its values are different for the different flow regimes and they gave the following values. For the turbulent turbulent regime, the value of c is 20 for viscous turbulent regime it is 12, for turbulent viscous regime it is 10 and for viscous viscous regime it is 5. So, using these four values of c we can find these two phi f square and phi g square for all the four flow regimes as functions of the multilinear parameter x and the Martinelli parameter we can note that it depends on the quality x and the properties. Similarly, here also it depends on the quality and the properties, but x v t and x t v will also depend on the mass flux and the diameter. So, for these two regimes turbulent turbulent and viscous viscous regimes when we substitute the value of x, we will get these two multipliers also as functions of x and the properties. Let us look at the expressions that we got for the homogeneous model. Here also we have x and the properties. For turbulent flow also we have x and the properties. The original graphs given by Lockhart and Martinelli are shown here. The frictional multipliers phi are plotted as functions of Martinelli parameter capital X. Here also it is phi both scales are logarithmic here. So, for the four flow regimes we have different graphs four different graphs for four flow regimes and here also we have four graphs for phi g for the four flow regimes. So, from these graphs for any of these four flow regimes we can find phi f or phi g. Then the upper graph is for the white fraction alpha which is also a function of the Martinelli parameter x and this scale is for 1 minus alpha and this scale is for alpha and here we have this graph which is for the white fraction alpha and this graph gives 1 minus alpha. There is also an analytical expression given by Wallis based on his analysis he got these two expressions for viscous viscous regime and turbulent turbulent regime for viscous viscous phi f square is equal to 1 plus 1 upon x v v whole raised to 2 and for the turbulent turbulent regime phi f square is equal to 1 plus 1 upon x v v raised to 16 by 19 whole raised to 19 by 8. For the white fraction Butterworth gave a relation which is alpha is equal to 1 plus 0 0.28 x raised to 0 0.71 raised to minus 1. So, you can either use the graphs originally given by Lockhart and Martinelli these graphs for the frictional multiplier and the white fraction or 
you can use these the Wallis expressions for phi f square and Butterworth's relation for white fraction or alternately for the frictional multiplier you can use these Shishalman Lyad relations also using the appropriate value of the C parameter. Okay.